Hey guys, James here, back with another video. Um, just want to do a quick, oh, I don't know how long it's going to be, but a, a, a quick video on this monitor. So this is the S2721 D. Now, if you've been watching some of my videos, um, you would know what the naming conventions are, but let me just roughly take you through it again. So, so S is usually um, meant to stand for uh, consumer. You have the P, which is the professional series, the, uh, the U, which is the ultra sharp series. Um, those are the more common ones. Now, uh, in terms of this, the second set of numbers, 27, that's obviously the size of the monitor. 21 is the manufacturing year, so this is 2021, and D is the resolution. So D is actually 1440p. So um, usually most, of, most monitors will end in a H, that is, um, stands for normal HD, uh, which is your 1080p, D is 1440p, and the ultra sharps usually end in a Q. So you have H, D and Q, all right? Now you can see here, we've got some basic, uh, you know, dimensions of the monitor. You can have a look and that's the basic dimensions. It does come with HDMI cable as well as a power cable. Now something to keep in mind that this is different from the uh, one that ends in S. So there is an S2721DS. Now the S actually stands for stand. So um, if you can see here at the back, um, this doesn't actually come with a height adjustable stand, the, the one that Dells are very famous for. This is the very budget, most cheapest one. The reason I didn't get the stand is because I'm going to be using the VESA mount to mount it anyway. I don't use the stands and so it would just be another waste. Um, but I'll definitely see if I can attach the stand um, because I have quite a few lying around. Now, just last thing, I just want to show you some of the features. It is an IPS monitor. It is 27 inches. It is Quad HD, uh, which is 1440p. It is VESA mount compatible. We do have speakers built in, and I'm assuming this allows you to break up different windows. Not sure what that means. Um, and we have AMD FreeSync. And essentially, if you don't know what FreeSync is, it allows your graphics card to time the refresh rate. So essentially, there's no screen tearing. Um, so I'll show you an example of what screen tearing is. Essentially, the refresh rate can't keep up and then the image splits or the image tears. Now, finally, uh, this box did come as it is shipped uh, direct from Dell. Uh, that's kind of how they ship their products. It doesn't come in another box. And so this is, this is how it got shipped. So, uh, you know, no physical damage that I can see, uh, but we'll get into the monitor. So let's unbox this. So typical, most uh, Dell monitors uh, have similar unboxings. We've got cover and we've got the stand assembly. So let's just quickly assemble this stand. Dell's very, very good with these usually. So I'm assuming we just attach it like so. Um, pretty straightforward, slide it in. And then there is a thumb screw, which we just screw like that. Pretty straightforward. Now this base does have rubber feet. We can see we've got one, one in each corner. We've got two at the back and then one at the front. This prevents the monitor from slipping. So that's this. Now the top is, uh, feels like a metal. Uh, this top bit feels like metal. This is definitely plastic and we've got like a cable hole as well uh, to feed your cables through. And then we'll see how we attach this one later. Now, uh, as described, it does come with standard HDMI cable, or black, and we get your standard IEC power cable as well. Okay, so they want us to do this. Okay, so you can hear it did, a, it did click, and the way to undo it I'm not sure if you can see, it's, it's really hard to see. Um, you see this little hole, <laughs> that little hole? So essentially you've got to poke something into it, like a screw, really long screwdriver or something, that releases it, and then that allows you to take the monitor out. Now here we do have our VESA mounts, and then we have our standard 100 by 100 VESA mounts as well. Screws included. So now that we've done that, so what we can do, just to make it nice, we're going to cover this up. Um, we can see there's a little arrow, so that goes up. And I'm guessing we, that's it. Now to take it out, we just press down on this little tab here, and then we just lift it up. Pretty simple, pretty good design. That's it. 
So we then take this out, take the cover off, and then we have our monitor, 27 inch. Okay. Now the thing that I love about Dell monitors, are pretty much all my monitors are actually from Dell. The reason I like it is they, they just have this no nonsense setup like, that is so quick for me for me to be able to like get this stand, uh, get this you know set up and and going. And now pretty much I just have to make the connection and that's it. It's really really easy. Now um, something that I'm just going to quickly do, we're just going to take this on a little tour. Um, let's just start with the stand since it's it's on. Now because this is the cheapest stand, um, as you can see here, uh, it doesn't adjust up and down, but we do have. Uh, forward and back tilt. Let me just give you a better shot here. So we do have upward tilt, a lot more upward than downwards. That's that. Now these monitors are pretty thick. I won't say they're that thin. I mean, when you're comparing it to the um, the professional series or even the ultra sharp series, it it is quite thin. Like, don't get me wrong, it is quite thin. But it's I think it's definitely thicker than than what I'm used to for the from the ultra sharps. Maybe it's just because it's 27 inch, um, and I haven't had that before. But um, I've always had 24 inches. But yeah, that's something that I noticed straight away. So in terms of design wise, we've got this little um, the kind of these, these kind of air vents at the top. Um, that acts as part of the design. Now at the bottom, I'm just going to remove this just so I can give you a nice clean view. All right, so let me just give you a demonstration. I'm just going to stick this really thin screwdriver into that hole and that is going to allow me to release the stand. Okay, now for case in point, um, this is just a standard, um, you know, Dell monitor stand that I've had um, from having so many monitors. Um, let's try if it actually works. I've got a feeling it will. Will it? No, it doesn't. Interesting. Okay, so these aren't backwards compatible. I, I, I generally thought that they would be. That's, that's okay though, because um, I'm not gonna be using um, the, the stand anyway. So starting from this side, we've got the power button and we've got our menu uh, navigation buttons. Now you can kind of just make out in here, that's where one of the speakers are. And then we move across, that's where the second speaker is. So this does have speakers, remember? We've got our IEC power. And from here, you can see we've got HDMI 1, HDMI 2, we've got DisplayPort in and we have our line out. So you can um, have you know, additional speakers if you don't want to use these as a line out option because we know that HDMI and DisplayPort can carry audio signal as well as video. So they can carry that simultaneously. Now this does have like a little bit of a texture to it. I'm not sure if you can see. And then we've got the Dell logo on the sides. There is nothing. Now, unlike some professional ultra sharp series monitors, sometimes they have USBs. There is no such thing on this one. We do have quite a thick border at the bottom. Uh, we've got the Dell logo as well. Um, I do like though that they do have physical buttons. I think that's, that's a great thing. So quickly, just wanted to list out some specs from the website. Uh, we do, it is an LED backlit LCD monitor. It is an IPS in-plane switching panel, which means that it does um, have better, quite good viewing angles. It is uh, 2560 by 1440 quad HD resolution at 75 hertz, which is really great. Usually it's 60 hertz. Um, it's just a little bit faster response time, 60 to 75 hertz. Um, we also have a 350 CD per meter squared brightness, eight millisecond greater Gary response time. Uh, we do have a fast version, uh, which has five, five milliseconds as well as four milliseconds as part of the menu that you can change that, I believe. We have two HDMI, one display port. It is anti-glare, as you can see, it's got a 3H hard coding. Um, it is uh, one display port 1.2. Uh, we do have AMD FreeSync technology, as I said, it's to get you that nice um, tear-free uh, experience. 16 by nine aspect ratio, 16.7 million colors, and uh, we have a three year um, service and premium panel exchange. And we do have speakers in here and they are three watt stereo speaker 
and it is 100 by 100 VESA compatible. Now, if you want to look up those specs, I will leave a link in the description. So please have a look at there. I know a lot of people ask some basic questions. Uh, just go to the website first, check it out for yourself. And if you do have questions, feel free to ask them below. Okay, so just starting out, we can see that when we turn it on, it's asking for what language. You can use the uh, buttons to select. Of course, we're going to select English. So straight off the bat, looking at this panel, um, looks great. Um, colors are actually quite good. Even though it's not a ultra sharp or even a professional series monitor, it actually looks quite nice. Contrast is great uh, and the sharpness is, is, is really great as well. Um, and viewing angles is, is fantastic as well. You know, no matter what kind of angle, of, of course you get the, the light um, shift because of my studio lights, but um, generally, the angle that you look at, the colors pretty much remain almost almost the same, which is really great. So I'm just going to quickly show you the, the menu. Now we have three options. First is your preset modes. So we do have standard, comfort view, movie, FPS, RTS, RPG, warm, cool, custom color, and standard. So we're just going to leave it on standard. The second button is your volume. So the default is 50%. The third button here is your menu, and this is the cancel button, which uh, brings up the menu. So at the top, we get brightness and contrast. Again, you can adjust these uh, like, just as you want. Input source, so we can do um, auto select, which I always recommend to do, unless you have a very specific reason on why you don't want the monitor to select it for you. So we have HDMI, DisplayPort, HDMI 2, auto select, or reset input source, so you can just reset this menu. We have color, so um, we have you're, again, those uh, color profile preset modes. Input color, we can choose between RGB or uh, YPB PR. So it's obviously detected that that is the signal required for this in order for the colors to look correct. And then we also have the reset for this. Next, we're gonna go into aspect ratio. So you can force um, different aspect ratios, four by three, five, five by four, or 16 by nine, which is the correct one. We have a sharpness adjustment response time. Again, this goes to the specs that I was talking about. So this is default eight milliseconds. Uh, fast would be five milliseconds and extreme would be four milliseconds. Let's just keep it on fast. And then again, a reset for this display menu. Audio, so you can enable or disable the speaker. We'll just enable it. This is the menu for what you're seeing right now. Um, and obviously got the language, the transparency, the timeout. So if I don't touch this uh, panel, then it will, you know, time out for 20 seconds. We have a lock on it as well if you don't want people touching it. Then we have personalization. So we can personalize what these shortcut keys do. So what I usually like to do is I like to keep the first one on brightness and contrast. And the second one, I actually like to keep on my input source. Now, this is just something that um, I like to do. Uh, but obviously you can just select it to however you want. Last one, uh, what, whether we want the power LED, you can see it, it's currently lit up um, and we can choose off in on mode, which means that it will actually uh, not show. So if you have a dark setup, then you don't want that light on, then by all means, that's a great thing that you can do. Again, you have a reset for this menu. Finally, we have this other section. So then uh, you can see we have the firmware version. I'm obviously taking out my service tag because this is the monitor that I've bought. We have got display info. Um, we can see the model number, the type, the source, the, the current resolution and the current uh, refresh rate. So I'm running this off my Mac. So it's just currently on 60 Hertz. Um, but if you're running it, um, you can probably get it to 75 if you tinker in the settings. DDC slash CI. Now this essentially is a function that allows you to control uh, settings using the, the built-in display cable. Um, and so you generally you just wanna leave this on because it allows your computer to you know, change settings. Um, LCD conditioning. Um, what this allows you to do is, I won't go through it, but allows you to, uh, if you've got you know, image retention blur, uh, it, allows, it cycles through different colors, goes into a mode where it cycles different colors and it helps to fix that. We've got the firmware version, we've got the service tag, and then we can do a factory reset of um, this whole thing. And we have uh, like a reset just for this menu. So pretty straightforward menu system, nothing too complex. And just quickly again, for your benefit, just gonna slot this in again. All you have to do is just slide this in here and then you'll hear a click. 
and that has allowed you to set up the monitor on the stand. So um, pretty much this is the screen and that's been the tour. And obviously you can see from this image, this image I took from New Zealand, it's, it's got a great display. And you know, I think that's a great testament to what Dell is doing. You know, back in the day, um, their professional series and their ultra sharp series were the ones that would be uh, the one to really go for, for really good accurate colors. But their S series, uh, their consumer series is actually pretty good. Um, I'm actually quite happy with this. Now, if I was, you know, actually doing this for work, if I was editing and if I was wanting full accurate colors, then I probably wouldn't get this one. I would, you know, spend the extra money to actually get the ultra sharp that has proven color accuracy. But you know, if, if I was just using this for like coding, for, um, you know, web browsing, day to day stuff, even watching movies, then I think this is a great option for you. It is the consumer model. Obviously, um, if you want the uh, adjustable stand, then you want to get the one with the S at the end. Um, I can leave links to all of this in the description below if you want to support this channel. But yeah, this one obviously is the cheapest one. I'm going to be using the VESA mount, so I'm not going to be, so that's why I just saved a bit of money on that. This has just been a very quick look um, of this uh, Dell S2721D, uh, my first S series monitor and my first 1440p monitor. I'm actually going to be using this as a portrait to replace my old monitor. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite, quite pleased with it and happy to uh, recommend it to you guys if you're just wanting it for, you know, a, as I said, you know, just basic stuff um, where you don't really need color accuracy. Great monitor, um, would recommend. So hope you like this video. Um, like it if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or any comments and I'll try to get around to answering them as soon as I can. Subscribe to see more videos like this in the future and I'll see you guys in the next one.